I want to review the practice that I gave you. Um, I was going to give you the test today, but we didn't have time to review Wednesday because of our snow day. So you have another day. Actually, you have another weekend. So take advantage of this. Um, the test is worth 50 points. So do well. Okay. So I gave you guys this on um, Tuesday. And Sean Henry, you are not here. There should be a copy for you on my desk. Um, and just make sure you understand how to do this. So remember to find the atomic mass um, if we have isotopes. To figure that out, we would take the mass of the first isotope, multiply it by the percentage, the abundance percentage, which we have here, um, and you have to convert that to a decimal. So we would take this 99.45, move the decimal place two times, and so this is what it would look like as a decimal. And then you just multiply these two and then add them together to get your final atomic mass. Make sure you have your units for AMU. Uh, so these were the practice questions that you have. Uh, I would say the most complicated ones are probably number one and number seven. So we'll take a look at those. So the first one was argon has three naturally occurring isotopes, argon 36, 38, and 40. Based on argon's atomic mass, which isotope exists um, as the most abundant in nature? So the way we would figure this out is we would look at argon. So if you pull out your periodic table, we would find argon, okay? So argon is right here, number 18. And its atomic mass is 39.948. So that number, if we look at the isotope options that we have, we have 36, 38, and 40. So if you look at this number here, this atomic mass, what is that number closest to? 39.948, you were to round it. That number would be closest to argon 40. So because that atomic mass is closest to 40, we know that argon 40 is the most abundant one, okay? All right, now moving on to number two. Copper exists as a mixture of two isotopes. Copper 63 is 69.17% abundant and it has a mass of 62.9296 AMU. Copper 65 is 30.83% abundant and it has a mass of 64.9278 AMU. We calculate the atomic mass of copper. So for me, I like to draw the little table because it's just like, okay, I'd like to put all my information there. For you, you might just jump to this. But I put in my information based on what the question told me. Um, and then what I like to do is I like to convert the per abundance percentage into a decimal. And so if I look at this one here, it's 69.17. So I've moved the decimal one, two times. And so now I have a decimal of 0.6917. Did the same thing here, and so this is my decimal. And then I take my atomic mass here, and I multiply it by that decimal. And then I add it to this one here, multiplied by that decimal, which I did here. So use your calculator. When you calculate this one, you should get this. Calculate this one, you get this. For a total of 63.55 AMUs. So this is the correct answer for number two. Okay, now remember the answer, if you're a little bit off, that's okay. It might be around the decimals. Just make sure that you are really showing your work like this because then that shows me you understand the process, okay? All right, now if we look at number two, uh, or number three. Calculate the atomic mass of silicon. The sil three silicon isotopes have an atomic masses and relative abundance of 97.9769, and here's the abundance. So here's all our information. So again, for me, I like to put it in a table. So this is the first isotope, the second one, and the third one. I remember I do like to convert my percentage into a decimal by moving the decimal two spots to the left. And so you could write the whole thing out, but I wanted to round. So I put 0.92, I rounded this to 0 0.05, and this one to 0 0.03. And so again, I take this AMU, multiply it by this abundance. I get that. This one here by this one. So I round it again. And then this one here to this one. And so when I multiplied, I got these values. And then I added these first two. I got this value. And then I added the last value for a total of 
28.09 AMUs. Okay, so that's your answer for number three. Um, number four talks about gallium. So gallium has two naturally occurring isotopes. So the first one, 69, that sh it shows us its atomic mass right here. And then it shows its, its abundance. And then the second one, the atomic mass and also the abundance. So this one's very similar, okay. You should have this one right here, okay. Again, move the decimal one, two spots. I rounded, two spots I rounded, multiply those things together, like here and here, and I got a total value of 69.7 AMU. So that's the answer for number four. Now, number five is bromine. So bromine has two naturally occurring isotopes. So it tells us the first one, it's atomic mass, it's abundance. Um, now this one is a little different. This is where we're trying to figure out the mass of bromine 81. So we're trying to figure out the mass of the second isotope. Um, and they don't give us a lot of things. So let me show you how I did this. So first what I did is I looked at bromine on the atomic periodic table. So if you find bromine, it's right here, it's 79.904. So this is where I got that number from. Okay, so it tells us one isotope has this atomic mass and this is an abundance. It didn't tell us these two, but because we're smart, right, the entire total abundance should add up to 100. So I took this 100 and I subtracted this abundance right here and I got this value of 49.31. So then I know this is the abundance percentage. So now this is where you would go backwards. So I have the atomic mass and then I have this value and this value, like how we were solving them earlier, but I don't know this one. So I put an X there. Okay, so the first step is I'm going to multiply these two, and I got this value here, and then I subtracted it from this side and canceled it out, and then I subtracted it from this side, and I got this value, and it would be equal to x times 0.4931. And then to get rid of this, I divided it here, and I divided it here, and so I got a total of 80.92 is equal to the x. So for that isotope, 81, its atomic mass is 80.92. Okay, so this should have been your correct answer. Alrighty, now I am looking at number six. So this one is calculating the atomic mass of lead. So this one tells you that there are three isotopes, tells you their atomic mass and their percentages. Sorry, there are four. And so this one is also easy. Um, for me, I was like, okay, I kind of already know what to do right here. So I was like, I'm just going to do it straight from the table. So again, I listed the atomic masses, um, the abundance, I changed them to decimals. And then all I did was I grabbed my calculator, I punched in this number, multiplied it by this decimal, and this is the value I got. Same thing here, typed in this value into my calculator, multiplied it by this value, and got this value, this one here times this one is equal to this, this one here times this value is equal to this. And so I just listed them down. And then I grabbed my calculator again, added these two, found that answer, added this one, added this one, and I got a total of 202.22 AMUs. So this should have been your answer for number six. Okay, now Moving on to number seven. Number seven is difficult, and part of that is because I didn't quite explain to you how to find this one, okay? So this one here, it gives us the atomic mass of each of the isotopes, and then we were supposed to use our periodic table to figure out um, what is the listed atomic mass. So we have two unknowns here. We don't know the abundance percentage. So first thing that I did is I looked on the periodic table for antimony, which is a little difficult to find, but it's SB, that's its um, little symbol, and so it's 121.76, okay? So I added that here, okay? So what I knew so far was that this isotope had this atomic mass, this isotope had this one, 
and this was from the periodic table. What we're looking for are these two. So the way I want to figure that out is you're going backwards again. Okay, so I put this atomic um, periodic table mass here is equal to this one times some sort of figure plus this one. Now this is where it's this is where the formula comes in. You have to put a 1 minus x here because this is an algebraic equation. So if we have two unknowns here, the way we figure that out is the 1 minus x. Okay. So when I do that, this gets brought down. This becomes 120.904x. Add that. Now you distribute this. So 122.904 times 1 is this. And then this times negative 1 becomes negative 122.904x, okay? So now I have this little equation here. To get rid of this, I subtract it on this side, subtract it on this side, cancels out here, and I get negative 1.144, okay? And then this here, if I add these two up, okay, because remember this is a negative, it becomes negative 2x. And so then I just set these two equal to each other. And I get rid of the negative 2 by dividing by the negative 2 on both sides. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in a little more. And then I got, if I divided this on my calculator, this is the answer that I got. And that's equal to my x. So this is going to be for the first x, this one here. Okay. So when I figure that out, I know this is a, a decimal, so i got to change it to percent. I move the decimal two times over, it becomes 57.2, okay? So this would be the abundance percentage for that, S, uh, that SB123 isotope. Now, to figure out what this one is, if I know this one, remember this whole thing should add up to 100. So all I did was I took 100, and I subtracted this value here, and I got 42.8%. So those are the answers to these two areas. So this one is for that SB123, and this one is for the uh, SB121. Okay, uh oh, the alarm is on. All right, so that is what I got. So you should check your work, okay?